Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Here we're going to discuss and show you how to use your analytics. So this is how you would collect data and analytics about how your readers are interacting with your digital magazines. Now I've set up a test here um, just on this URL here which we're going to use as part of the demonstration. Now the software integrates with your Google Analytics account and if I just bring up 3D issue here we can show you where you would insert this tracking code. So this screen will be very familiar to you so you would have added in your PDFs which I'm just doing this one page document just to show you here. Now to add in your Google Analytics tracking information you just need to go to here to profile and edit and just make sure that whatever your analytics account number is you just need to insert it in there. Then once that's done you're OK and once you build the publication it gets sent to your website. Now what the software is doing in the meantime is it's adding some tracking code to every single page in the publication and to every event in that publication so to videos, audio files that you may have and it's going to send that information directly to your Google Analytics account. So let's just jump back to our online publication where this would be and this is the publication online. So a reader would probably flip through your publication, view a couple of videos and generally browse the publication. Now all these events such as I have a, a web link button here, I have notes and even if I search for a term here All these events are tracked and logged and we'll be able to show you in your Google Analytics account. So let's just see where in your Google Analytics you'll find this information. So this is your Google Analytics account. Now to get to this uh, section it's called event tracking and you can find this by going to content and event tracking down here. Now all of your digital editions and all their tracking information they're all going to be held within this section. So once you're in this section you need to go to categories. Now once in categories you'll see on here a list of event categories. Now every time you publish a digital magazine it's going to have a separate event category. So if you have a look at this one, Demos, Test Stats, this is the one that we've been trying out and I can just show you here. See, by the URL we can see 3dissue.com Demo Test Stats. So if I want to see this information, it's this one we're looking at. So I'm going to jump right into this one by clicking it. And now we can start to kind of make sense of the data that this is tracking. So we're just going to show you a few areas of this interface. So this is the date range. Now you can get statistics from a particular date range, so whether that means month, weekly or daily. So what we're going to do is I've started tracking information for a particular range, so I'm just going to put in my date range here and apply. Now we can see from here this is the total events that has gone on with my publication whilst it's been online in a demo mode. Now you'll notice at the moment this is tracking your total events and these figures, if I hover over here, I've got 132, I've got 125 and 44 total events. Now that's for each date within that date range. Now you'll notice down here you have total events and unique events. So it's just make sure that you know the difference between the two and I can quickly explain here. So the total events, these are calculated uh, by the total number of interactions with attract web object. Uh, on the other hand the single user session or visit has one or more events. This is tracked by the unique event. In simple terms if one user clicked a video five times it would have a total events as five but unique as one. So just make sure that you're looking at the right one here and you can also change it up here so if you want to know by a specific date um, how many unique events you had, you can simply come up here and go to unique events and the date will change here. You can also change it to the number of visits, average time on site, so it all depends on 
what information you want to get out of these uh, statistics. The next thing we're going to look at down here are the event actions that we we can kind of track. Now these are listed down here so we have jumped page so this is any time someone has turned a page or indeed clicked on the buttons to the side so let's just show you ways of doing this so if they turn the page like this that's jumped to a page if they click that button there that's jumped to a page if they click these jumped page buttons that's also associated as jumped pages you have zoomed in on page which is pretty self-explanatory audio played so how many times audio was played uh, website visited how many times they viewed notes if you've got embedded flash within your publication the keyword search feature what was used for that and we can even delve into that and see what words were searched for which we'll show you in a moment the archive menu the print pages and exit full screen so those are the events that have happened in my publication that I've had online here and at any time I can view more information about this. So perhaps I want to get some information about my audio file which I had in my digital magazine. So I can click on audio played and this shows me that it's this audio file that we're looking at so if in doubt you can simply select that URL and paste it into your browser and you can see exactly what file that was. Now I can see from here that it was played 18 times by 12 different um, visits. Now that's bearing in mind it's for this date range. If I wanted to see for a particular day I can change this to say what happened on that Friday and it automatically goes down to here so I can view exactly what happened on any date for any action. Let's go back to those categories a moment. You'll also notice here that there's the event action, which we've been looking at here, and the event label. So every page or object has a label, and if we click on this, we can have a look at that in more detail. So again, we're still viewing this date range, and if I scroll down here, you can see all the labels. Now this is sorted in the most popular um, accessed objects. So at the top we have page 6, then we have page 2, 4, and so on. We can then delve into further, so if I wanted to say, right, what happened on page 6 for all these 48 events by 20 different visits, I can click on 6, and I can see that on page 6, 38 pages were turned, and 10 times the page was zoomed in. So you can take that data and think, you know, which pages were most popular with your readers, which were spent more time on, uh, and so on and then you can amend your publication so that your users you know get all the things out of it that they prefer doing. Now your publications will always get this event tracking as long as you put that event tracking ID in the software and it's just worth noting that it's really important to have your different publications have different URLs because if we went back into the category section a moment you'll notice that the category is dependent on the URL. So as long as your publication has a different folder name, you'll have a different event category, which means that you can then get data on specific issue-specific uh, publications. So that's just something to bear in mind there. Something you might really want to look at is things like the keyword search. So you can then see what was searched for by your end readers. Now this is really useful because if people are commonly searching for a term that isn't in your magazine or publication you might think about you know adding a section on that category so let's go and jump into this if I select keyword search here again it's doing this just for this date range and I can see that I had these uh, terms searched for these number of times by these unique events so the word Dublin was searched for twice by one visit. If I click on this I can get more detailed information about that and also change the date so I can see you know trends in that uh, key, keyword search term. Something also to consider is the audio played and the videos played. Now if in your publication you have this to auto start of course 
it's automatically going to be tracked that it was um, an actionable object. So if you really want to track how many people are actually viewing the, the video or the audio file, you might want to consider making that a button that they have to click to launch that file. Now, other things that you might want to, to look at here is changing the way that you view your data so you can change it into kind of pie charts here or bar charts just to see what sort of actions people are taking on your digital publications. And um, with any data, you know, it's just really important just to decide what information is useful for you to know. So not to get lost in all these stats, take probably four or five key statistics from this that you want to track publication on publication. And you can then use that to develop future publications and to transform your digital magazines to get the, the best performance.